Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Topic for today is reinstalling iRacing and how to save a little bit of time in the process. I've done a bunch of fresh iRacing and Windows installs over the past six months for various reasons. So I wanted to walk you through the steps that I typically follow and share a couple of useful tips and tricks. So let's start off by talking about the reasons for why you might want to either reinstall iRacing or reinstall Windows. It's true these days Windows 10, even Windows 11, they're generally reliable, but that doesn't mean problems can't creep in over time. Now on the iRacing side, maybe you've been experiencing FPS issues, so drops that you can't understand. Maybe you've looked through and reinstalled a bunch of drivers, but they haven't fixed the issue. Maybe you're getting random error message when you're starting up iRacing or crashes whilst you're in the sim that you can't diagnose. Maybe even it's just been over 12 months, you know, since you've done a clean install and you fancy just refreshing it because there have been a lot of updates coming through the sim and having a clean install could be good at just getting rid of any gremlins in the background. All of those are great reasons. On the Windows side, it's kind of similar, really. You know, if you want to do a reinstall of Windows, obviously that's a bit of a bigger lift, but same thing, you know, if you're getting random errors in Windows or you've installed a ton of software, uninstalled it, and you just want to start fresh to kind of remove any potential issues, it's a great reason for doing a reinstall as well. Now, if you use your iRacing PC for other things, a clean Windows install can be a pain. So do bear that in mind. I'm gonna take you through the steps for both how to reinstall iRacing, but also how to reinstall Windows. But if you do the fresh install of Windows, obviously there's a lot more configuration and reinstalling of apps outside of iRacing. If your PC is used maybe for work as well as for racing and potentially for other games as well. The last scenario would be if you've got a brand new PC and you need to get everything transferred from iRacing from your existing PC onto your new one. All of the content in this video will cover that scenario as well. So before getting started with a reinstall, either of Windows or iRacing, the first thing we need to do is do the backup. This is a critical phase because if you do all the right backups before you start the reinstall, it will save you a ton of time later on when you're putting back on the programs and transferring all your documents and data back into your either new PC or reinstalled version of iRacing or Windows. So I've got open here my documents folder um, so you can see what I'm doing. Let's first focus on the key iRacing areas that you're going to want to back up. The first one is probably obvious. So in your documents folder, if you haven't changed the default location, you'll have a folder called iRacing. If I double click into that, you can see the typical folder structure, uh, all the configuration files, etc., that are within this. So the first thing to do is to do a copy of that iRacing folder and then save it somewhere that makes sense. I have a second hard drive uh, on my PC. You can see here my D drive. So that's generally where I move my documents to when I'm doing a reinstall so I can keep it safe. But you can move it to a USB drive or even store it in the cloud. You know, if you have iCloud or Google Drive, that's another place you can put it just as a temporary holding location. So make sure you copy that iRacing folder that contains all of your settings and will save you having to reconfigure iRacing when you reinstall it. The second is all of the cars and the tracks. So these are important to make a copy of before you reinstall iRacing because these represent the most significant downloads when you're doing a reinstall or when you're getting recent updates from iRacing. And you can safely copy both the cars and the tracks into, as I said, removable hard drive, somewhere online, whatever makes the most sense, and then copy them back once you've reinstalled iRacing and it will save you a ton of time having to re-download some of the heaviest content from the sim when you started up for the first time. Now, the cars and tracks content is not in the same folder as your settings. Where you actually need to go is into your C drive or whatever your main hard drive is. Head over to program files, brackets x86. You should find iRacing in here. And then what we are looking for is tracks. So if I double click here, you can see all of the track folders. So you would do a right click, do a copy, and again, save that folder wherever makes sense for you. And then if I head up to the top here, you can see the other one, which is cars. 
same thing, right click, copy, save it in your preferred location, but somewhere where it's off your main hard drive, especially if you're going to reinstall Windows because everything on that drive is going to be wiped as part of that process. So next will be your iRacing support apps. I'm just gonna cover RaceLab here. Obviously there's many others out there that you might be using. My recommendation is do your research online, understand how to save the data or the settings files that those apps generate. So you can again, save them somewhere safe and then you'll be able to re-import them back once you've reinstalled the programs. But just as an example, I'll show you RaceLab. So I've just opened it up here. Um, the key thing for me that I wanna save is gonna be the layouts. So I'll jump to the layouts menu and then and if I go to uh, edit, uh, so this is my main layout that I use across all of iRacing. You can see if I hit the edit button, uh, there's an export layout button. If you hit that, then it gives me a folder location to say it. And you can see here that I frequently save that file. Um, where that saves is again in documents in RaceLab apps. So I can show you that right here. And there it is. And so for me, actually, when I do a reinstall of Windows, I tend to just copy my entire documents folder or have OneDrive just back it up for me. And then I just uh, re-download it once it's there. But if you don't, um, just make sure you jump into RaceLab apps, grab anything that's saved in here um, so that you can then re-import it back into the program once you're done. Now, the other program that everyone uses, and I just want to confirm that you shouldn't need to back anything up for this, would be Trading Paints. Trading Paints houses all of the paints that you've selected for your cars online. Um, they're not on your PC. They're just downloaded to your PC when you jump into race sessions. So there shouldn't be anything that you need to do around paints. If you have custom paints that you're using offline and not within Trading Paints, so long as they are stored within the proper folders within iRacing, then because you're backing up, you're or iRacing documents folder when you bring it back your paints will all be there the final bit of housekeeping before you embark on a fresh install of windows is just a double check of documents and data that are currently sat on your c drive just to make sure that you've got everything backed up we focused on iRacing and iRacing support apps but whatever other documents pictures music videos you have just do a final sweep make sure you've moved it onto wherever your backup is whether it's online or whether it's on a second hard drive or a movable disk because when we fresh install windows it is going to clean out everything on that c drive so you just want to make sure that you haven't left anything behind. The other thing that I also tend to do is I'll jump into settings, I'll jump into my installed apps and I'll just do a quick check, maybe even just a quick list of everything that I currently have installed. And just to double check, are there any additional programs that I can export settings from so I can save time, not have to rebuild the settings when I reinstall that program, but I can just import the settings from a previously saved file. Again, just a useful time saving feature. If you're just planning to reinstall iRacing and not do a fresh install of Windows, the process is pretty simple. You want to head through to Settings in Windows, Add a Remove Programs, and then Remove iRacing. That generally is sufficient, but if you really want to make sure you clean up all of the files and folders that iRacing might leave behind, then I'll point you to two areas to go and check out. The first we've already talked about, it is the iRacing folder within Documents. So I'll show you here on screen. If you delete this folder and then you don't bring it back once you've reinstalled iRacing, just know the consequence of that is you will lose all of your previous settings around graphics, screen configuration, etc. Now, if you're running into graphics problems, that might be a good thing because you get to start fresh. But if you're just doing a reinstall for other reasons, then generally it's safe to bring this documents folder back and then you don't have to redo and reconfigure all of your settings within iRacing. The second area to go and hunt out if you really want to wipe any trace of iRacing from the system uh, is to go into your C drive, go into program files x86, and then there's an iRacing folder here. iRacing should clean out all of the content here, but installers don't always do that. So if you want to make sure you can head here once you've uninstalled iRacing from add remove programs, you can delete this folder pretty safely. And then when you reinstall iRacing, this folder and all of the contents will get recreated. So it's pretty simple. If you're going down the path of a fresh Windows install, there's a couple of ways to get that started. The first is within Windows itself. You can head to settings, you can head to system, 
scroll down and hit recovery then on this screen you'll see on the right hand side there is a button called reset pc if you hit that it will guide you through the steps of reinstalling windows and it will even give you an option to copy back your documents and data so you don't even have to back them up now typically this isn't the option that i select i prefer to create a bootable usb and then manage the deletion of the c drive and the partitions myself i just prefer to know that it is a truly clean install that i'm controlling so if you do prefer that option it's very easy to do you just head over to the microsoft website the address is at the top here software download windows 11 couple of options on this page but the one that we care about is to create Windows 11 installation media once you hit download now this downloads a really lightweight app which once you plugged in a USB drive which is 8 gigabytes or greater it will then install a bootable copy of Windows onto that USB drive and then you will be all set at that point, you need to restart your PC once you're absolutely confident that you've backed up everything you need from your C drive. And then you need to make sure that the PC will boot from the USB and not just boot back into your existing copy of Windows. Typically, there is a key press required. It is different depending on the brand of PC or the brand of motherboard that you have. For example, mine is F12. But have a look online, double check what that is. And typically you just hit that button multiple times once the PC is restarting. And then it should take you to the setup screen where it is reading from that bootable Windows USB. And then it will take you through all the steps to get Windows reinstalled. But be aware, once you start that process, there is no going back to the information you have on the C drive. So again, just a health check to make sure you backed up everything you need from your Windows drive before you start that process. Now, I can't show it you on screen here because I can't capture it, but when you go through that process, one of the steps part of setup that it will ask you for is what do you want to do with the existing C drive and the partitions that are already created. If you want a truly fresh Windows install, when you get to that screen, make sure that you delete all of the existing C drive partitions. And then what that will do is it will allow Windows to have a completely clean drive to reinstall that fresh copy of Windows on. Again, a health check here. If you have a second hard drive that's plugged in to your motherboard, such as a D drive, maybe you have two solid state drives. That is how my setup works. Just make sure that you do not touch or delete any of the partitions that are on that D drive. For example, that for me is where I back up all of my documents when I go through a Windows reinstall. And so it's very easy to accidentally select that drive uh, to delete partitions from. So just take real care going through the steps and make sure that the only drive that you're trying to clean or delete the partitions from is that main Windows C drive. Okay, so you've got a fresh install of Windows, you've booted to the desktop, and at this stage, you're ready to reinstall iRacing. However, three steps that I recommend you do before jumping into that reinstall. First of all, Windows updates. Every time you do a fresh install, there's always a whole bunch of Windows updates that the PC will need to grab and install. Now, you can get going with the reinstall of iRacing whilst this is happening, but I find that can lead to corruption, can cause installation issues with iRacing. So my recommendation is this, either go into Windows Update within settings, click the check for updates and kind of force the updates through. That's one way to do it. Or my preferred option is actually to leave Windows overnight or whatever time you've got, five to six hours, to look after the updates itself, just so I can make sure that if I hit check for updates, I'm not causing any confusion for the system or causing it to download a Windows update twice and potentially cause some corruption. So my recommendation is this, head into system, head into power, and then once you're in here, just make sure that when the PC is plugged in, that it's not going to put the device to sleep. Otherwise, this method won't work because the PC will sleep after a period of time. But if you set it to this, and then basically if you just lock your PC and leave it overnight, ideally, or whatever time you have, then 
you can be safe in the knowledge that Windows is going to do its Windows updates on its own. It'll do them in the right order and it won't have to contend with any big data copies or reinstalling of programs whilst it's doing that. I find that is the safest way to get Windows update to complete all of the updates properly without me interfering with it in any way and potentially causing corruption. So you don't have to do it that way, but if you have the time, I recommend it. I think it's just the safest way to work through that reinstallation of all those Windows updates. Step two is driver updates. Now, Windows Update will have grabbed a whole bunch of drivers to make sure that your PC works when you're going through the fresh install process, so that's great. But just bear in mind that manufacturers also carry versions of the drivers for your PC, and typically they are more recent, might carry additional stability or security benefits, so it's always worth checking out the manufacturer's website and grabbing the latest drivers from there for your system. Now for me, I'll show you quickly what this looks like. I would head over to AMD to grab the chipset drivers for my board, which is an X570, super simple. Windows 11, download, install, good to go. Secondly, I'd head over to the Gigabyte website. Gigabyte makes my version of the X570 and I'd head over to their support page, head into drivers. You can see there's a section for audio, there's a section for LAN, there's a section for WLAN, Bluetooth, so grab all the latest drivers that are aligned with the configuration of my system, get them installed, good to go. And then last of all, and this is really key because Windows Update rarely carries late versions of the GPU software that you might be running for either AMD or NVIDIA. So just make sure that you head over to the right website, go to the support pages, look up your particular GPU, and then grab the latest drivers for that. So at this stage, now we're ready to reinstall iRacing. So I'm not gonna show you those steps. iRacing is already installed on the PC that I'm recording on today, but you'd head to the website, grab the latest version of iRacing, install it, follow the instructions as you normally would, no big deal. That will then recreate the folder structure that you need to be able to copy back in the cars and the tracks data um, back over to that program files area. So just as a reminder, I'm just gonna show you exactly where that is. So let's assume that you've got cars and tracks folders backed up somewhere, maybe on your D drive, maybe on a USB stick. What you would wanna do once you've reinstalled iRacing is head to the C drive head into program files x86, head into iRacing, and then in this folder, you can see there's cars, there's tracks, and don't worry if you don't see those folders. If you haven't started the sim, um, likely I don't think the sim will have created those folders yet, but you can still copy back in the cars and the tracks folders with all of that data back in here. And then when iRacing boots up for the first time, uh, it will see that data. It still might need to do some minor updates around the cars and the tracks, but all of the bulk of the uploads, the significant gigabytes that you would normally have to re-download will all be there. And that will save uh, a lot of time and save your internet connection as well. The second part would be your iRacing folder that contains all of the settings. So again, for me, that's in documents. And then you can see iRacing here. Again, this is pretty simple. All you do is copy that folder from wherever you have it backed up, paste it in here, and then you're good to go. All of the settings will carry through, but there is one file that I want to point out which will not carry through and is something that you'll need to reset up once you get back into the sim for the first time. The file name is called Joy Calib, uh, and you can just open this as a text file. This is important because this file is the calibration of your wheels as well as your pedals. And every time you do a fresh install of iRacing, you will need to recalibrate both the wheels and the pedals. So just know that everything else, graphic settings, controls in the car, anything other configuration you might have set up will carry through. But when you go into the sim for the first time and you jump into options, it's going to force you to recalibrate your wheel and pedals. So it's a minor annoyance. I haven't found any way to get around that um, because when you reinstall windows that what you can see here the instance guid will no longer match to what iRacing has and therefore it's looking for a different two devices so you'll just need to reset up wheels and pedals and then you will be good to go To finish the rebuild, I've got two final housekeeping tasks for you that I recommend running once you've got all of your programs reinstalled and everything is to your liking back within Windows. The first one is the system file checker. 
When you've done a fresh install, obviously everything within Windows should be perfect and fresh because it's a new copy. But because of Windows updates, because of all of the changes that you're making when you're reinstalling programs, it is possible for certain files to get corrupted. A good way just to knock that on the head quickly um, is to use the system file checker. The way to run that is you head into the start menu. Um, what you want to search for is CMD, which is the command prompt. Just make sure you select run as administrator, otherwise this command won't run as it's supposed to. And then what you want to type in once you get to the window is SFC space forward slash S-C-A-N-N-O-W. Scan now. Now I'm not going to run mine here because I ran it fairly recently, but once you run this, it's going to take maybe five, potentially 10 minutes, depending on the speed of your system. It's going to do a file system integrity check. If it finds any corrupted files, it will replace them. And then you know that your copy of Windows is golden and good to go. And then the last task that I like to do, although certainly not mandatory, would be just a quick optimize of the drives. So you can see here, I'm just searching for uh, defragment and optimize drives. This is something that Windows will do automatically, generally once a month. But again, because when I've done a big reinstall, I think it's kind of good for the health of the drive to jump in here and just do this optimization. So I'll quickly run this. It's really easy, you just hit optimize. It takes a couple of seconds and then you know you're good to go. That's all we have for you on this one. Hopefully it's not a process that you need to go through too often, but I always find it handy to know what are the tips, tricks, and ways to save time when you're doing a full reinstall, especially with a program like iRacing when you're contending with large amounts of data that you don't really want to have to re-download once you've got the program reinstalled. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next one.